Since liftoff Sunday, it's been a serious business, but the Apollo 10 team has never allowed it to become a matter of gravity. Bruce Morton reports from the Manned Spacecraft Center in Houston. One little noticed milestone on this flight, David, the return of the sandwich to space. John had a corned beef sandwich, you'll remember, aboard Gemini 3, but the corned beef was a little gamey by the time Young got to it, and the experiment never did exactly work. This time, Young and his colleagues have two spreads, ham salad and chicken salad, in tubes. They can squeeze them onto either party rye or white. Each slice is vacuum sealed, the man in charge of food here said, in its own little spacesuit. The man in charge is a veterinarian, by the way, and takes some kidding about meals even a dog wouldn't eat. But he did let us sample the bread. The vacuum sealing makes it look funny, like a piece of shiny plastic, but it really does taste like bread. The astronauts also have some sea ration type meals they can heat and eat, a great triumph. But everything else is still freeze dried, little grayish blocks of something or other, to which Stafford, Young, and Cernan add water. It doesn't exactly make your mouth water, but I guess it works. For connoisseurs like you, David, of earlier space menus, I should add that everybody still likes the bacon squares and those strawberry cereal cubes still aren't selling. David? They should try eating at the CBS cafeteria to steal from another network. Uh, we're standing by now for television pictures from space within the next few minutes. We should explain that the ground receiving station, Goldstone in Southern California, is not quite in the uh, proper relationship with the spacecraft for the very best quality pictures. They'll be able to use only their smaller antenna, their 85-foot antenna at Goldstone for the first few minutes of this broadcast instead of the huge 210-foot dish. The result of that will be probably uh, snow in the picture, at least in the early stages. CBS News color coverage of the flight of Apollo 10 will continue in a moment. And mentioning uh, Gene Cernan, uh, Nelson Benton and Scott McCloud at uh, Grumman, today is the day that uh, Gene Cernan crawls through that tunnel and gets the first look inside. Uh, Snoopy, what's he going to be doing uh, tonight? David, while we've been uh, getting ready to do this, uh, Scott and I were talking about what Cernan would be doing, and it's not like the old days when you just flew with an altimeter, an airspeed indicator, and a turn and bank indicator. Everything is by checklist, uh, especially on a spacecraft. So, Scott, let's get out your checklist and see where CERN's going tonight. All right. They carry a checklist similar to what is carried in an aircraft, uh, knee pad size. This is what they will be carrying for every activity that they perform in either spacecraft. There is a systems activation checklist that they would be using for this. Well, let's start with it. How's uh, Cernan going to be dressed when he comes into the limb tonight? Well, he'll be wearing a flight suit, similar to what you have on there, Nelson. And rather than using the full pressure suit like this, like he had used last time, or like uh, Rusty had used for his checkout, and the umbilical, if you recall, that came from the command module down into LEM and then the transfer from one to the other one, he'll come through a little more comfortable in a flight suit, as I said. And actually, he, uh, he comes in right up there. We're not on it, but the uh, hatch that comes in from the command module will come down, comes in uh, head first, doesn't he, Scott? Yes, he'll come in head first, he'll be facing the forward portion of the limb. Uh, when he comes through, he will not see this instrument panel as we see it here. Instead, there will be a large white bag, I guess you would say, hung over it called an interim stowage assembly. And a lot of his gear will be hung in this. One of his first jobs is to take this off and hang it over on his portable life support system, right in this position. And uh, he will be in the lamb tonight for about, uh, what, a uh, couple of hours? Yes. All told. And then, of course, the big day will come uh, tomorrow when after Gene Cernan has made this preliminary check out of the limb. Uh, he and Tom Stafford will enter it for the very critical f phase of the flight. It's been about uh, one month since Cernan and Stafford saw the inside of the limb that they are going into. They spent all together about uh, 24 hours in that limb, training, looking it over, uh, before it was put into the uh, stack of the launch vehicle. And so uh, tomorrow they'll be uh, getting a look at it again for the real critical part of Apollo 10. David? 
Nelson, one thing that may be forgotten in all this concentration on television is that the astronauts are also taking regular photographs uh, during their flight. It will be particularly important during their passes over the landing site. Of course, there is no television in this particular mission inside the lunar module. And the astronauts want to bring back as much information as possible of the landing area. Stereo pictures, hopefully, of the approach to the landing site. The last spacecraft over the moon, Apollo 8, you'll remember, got some excellent pictures, even though they were 60 miles high and having some fogging problems with their windows. This time, we're going down to 10 miles, we trust, and with clear windows, the results should be even better. Mission Control has just notified Apollo 10 astronauts Stafford, Young, and Cernan that we are go for TV. We understand that the Goldstone tracking station is locked on to the signal, and so the uh, trouble is somewhere west of Denver, we suppose. We should have TV any second now as they make the final adjustments. While this uh, flight is, it is true, as much as possible a duplication of the actual landing mission, Apollo 11, there are some differences. And I was reminded of one uh, watching Scott McCloud and Nelson Benton there. Uh, for instance, by this point in the Apollo 11 flight, almost certainly the astronauts will have gone into the lunar module and checked it out. Apollo 10 was going to the moon. This flight was going to the moon almost no matter what. Apollo 11 probably won't bother with any more lunar operations than necessary if the LEM is not right. CBS News color coverage of the flight of Apollo 10 will continue in a moment. The uh, center of the Earth, right near the Terminator. Well, the astronauts or mission controller, someone has finally found the right switch, and we believe we do have color pictures finally. Color pictures of the Earth. And the orange spot to the right is the North continent. You can see basically the Sahara Desert, and above that, the Mediterranean Sea. The rest of the world is pretty much a case of clouds. The solid cloud cover that's covered the North Pole and the most of Europe is still with us today. At this time, as we look at the Earth, we are 210,000 miles away. We've only got about 9,000 more miles to go to the moon. Uh, we're traveling approximately 2,500 miles an hour relative to the Earth. Also, in about 15 minutes, we will enter the shadow of the moon and make our major burn to enter lunar orbit in approximately three hours. And also, in about 15 minutes, we will enter the shadow of the moon and make our major burn to enter lunar orbit in approximately three hours. Now, at this distance, the Earth looks slightly smaller than a tennis ball to us. That's a little bit larger than a golf ball. And I hope it shows up the same way in your screen. Uh, Dan, uh, it's again, a... Uh, south of Africa. Go ahead, Charlie. Right, I was just going to uh, add that we can uh, see the uh, uh, northern part of Africa. It uh, we had a bluish tinge to it at first, but now it's coming into a uh, sort of an orangish brown, and uh, we can see the uh, South Atlantic and uh, and the uh, cloud covers uh, very well. It's, uh, the colors are uh, very good. Over. Uh, Roger, again, the, the Sahara Desert, the Atlas Mountains. Morocco, Libya, we can see from here. It is an orange, uh, a brownish orange. The nighttime, the Terminator has cut across the Suez Canal and most of Egypt and is now covering most of South Africa. I can't see Spain. It is a greenish brown and is completely contrast with respect to North Africa. Uh, however, you may have difficulty seeing it on your set due to resolution at this distance. That's Tom Stafford, Again, of course. You can see uh, Brazil but it's covered mostly with clouds at this time. Stafford uh, talking Roger to Ken, Charles uh, Duke. We, uh, have a, we can see... Time, Apollo 10. Go ahead. Go ahead, Ken. Uh, Roger, at this, Roger, at this time, Apollo 10 is going through the preparation for the lunar orbit insertion burn. And uh, the next time we lose contact from the Earth, the next time that we come around, we will... To have contact with the Earth will be at approximately a 60 mile by 170 mile orbit around the moon. Uh, right now we cannot see the moon even though it is rapidly accelerating towards us.
Now. 